In this video, we're going to do a tour of the all-new Adobe Captivate. Okay, so first thing right off the bat, obviously I'm recording this video in advance of the all-new Adobe Captivate, formerly called Project Charm, being released. However, I have it on good authority that the last version of the beta is intended to be the actual release build that all of you will see uh, today. And I'm gonna publish this video only on the day that the all new Captivate comes out. So with that cleared up, what we're going to do today is we're gonna do a basic walkthrough of the user interface, let you know a couple of the things that have changed, uh, some of the things that are missing and some of the things that will be coming in future builds and what you can expect from that rollout. Uh, if you subscribe to what's now going to be called uh, Adobe Captivate Classic or Classic Captivate, if you will, uh, in other words, Adobe Captivate 2019, you are eligible to also use the all new Adobe Captivate as well. One license, two pieces of software. And of course, there are different situations where uh, using one piece of the software makes sense over the other. For example, if you're maintaining older courses for a client and you don't want to necessarily rebuild them from the ground up, obviously using Classic Captivate makes sense in those situations. However, if a client has reached out to you and said, you know, hey, Paul, we want to use uh, responsive design and I know that the new, uh, all new Adobe Captivate will offer a better solution in this case, I'll probably choose that. One of the things that the Adobe folks have shared with us is sort of the roadmap over the next couple of years. So a lot of people obviously are very concerned about losing Adobe Captivate 2019 or being forced to use something that they're not ready for. Don't worry, Classic Captivate or Captivate 2019, whatever you wanna call it, will continue to be a primary piece of software for you to use while they continue to develop the all new Adobe Captivate, or what we used to call Project Charm. In fact, uh, Classic Captivate will be around until at least 2027, uh, at which point they'll probably have everything in place to have you know, a single version of the software as well. So I'll also say this is that the all new Adobe Captivate has many of the features of Classic Captivate, but there's still a lot of work to do. And in fact, they're gonna be relying on you, the users of the software, to provide them that feedback and let them know what things you want. But there are some features that are just not there in, at the time of launch. They will be coming. Uh, their goal is to have parity between these two pieces of software. But at the launch of the all new Adobe Captivate, which is version 12, my understanding, um, you know, things like uh, PowerPoint import won't be there or virtual reality projects won't be there. They'll be coming, but uh, obviously more development needs to take place. Also, too, one of the biggest concerns that many users have expressed, I've seen this on the forums and uh, in different uh, groups and so forth, many people are concerned about how long it took for updates to come out with Classic Captivate. And uh, Adobe is committed to uh, a new build once every three months or so. So even if they're a little late on that, and let's say it's six months, that's still a heck of a lot better than what it has been over the last uh, four or five years. So I'm looking forward to seeing new releases of the all new Adobe Captivate as they come. Uh, they're not forgetting about Classic Captivate right now. They, they will continue to provide updates and, and improvements to that software as well. In fact, I have it on good authority that this summer, summer of 2023, we will see an update to Classic Captivate. Uh, which is what I'll call it from this point moving forward. Now, let's talk a little bit about the new software. Let me go ahead and open it up on my computer here. You can see uh, at first glance, very obviously a clean, clean interface. Um, couple of things to mention. There's sort of a new paradigm with this software. First of all, it is fully responsive design. So there is no 
blank project where you pick a certain uh, aspect ratio and resolution for your project, you automatically are designing with responsive design. But unlike Captivate 2019 or 2017 or even all the way back to uh, Captivate 80, you aren't going to have to do the heavy lifting for this. The software is very intuitive when it comes to uh, building your resources to work across a wide variety of devices. Now, there's sort of a new paradigm here. Obviously, we have the slide paradigm. That's That's been around since the very early days of Adobe Captivate. But there are also, to do responsive design, there are blocks, and blocks exist on a slide. Blocks can force a slide to become larger than it is by default. And within each of those blocks are components. When you wish to add new slides to um, a project that you're working on, you can use the plus icon here. And that's going to open up, um, similar to what we have today with Classic Captivate, the plus icon on the toolbar allows us to add, you know, regular slides, question slides like the ones that are down here. Uh, again, you're going to see that there's just a small subset of question slides for today. But obviously, this is something that Adobe is going to continue to work on uh, based on your feedback, of course. So make sure you let them know, hey, you know, I need, um, you know, a drop down fill in the blank question or something like that. Uh, that's not presently there. From this plus icon, you can ac access the assets as well. And you'll recognize that as before. So you can see, um, you know, similar to how the asset store had different projects. Right now, there's just a couple of here, but you'll be uh, given the opportunity to download uh, other completed projects, sample projects that you can kind of reverse engineer and use for your own purposes as well. Now, over here, let's talk a little bit about these blocks. So the, the first thing is a text block. So you'll see these different blocks that you can choose. So for example, if you want to add some text to this slide, which I typically would do, I can click on the text block and it adds it there. Now the text block is made up of components. So in this text block, I can add a title, I can add a subtitle, I can remove the body. I have to keep at least one of these components intact. And I can add a button, for example. So let's say this was a, a title slide, and I'm just going to put in, you know, course title, and the subtitle is, you know, making things great at the airport or whatever, wherever you work. <laughs> so there's a text block, and of course you have the opportunity to customize the appearance. There's a series of presets for each of the text components. And you can see here, you can scroll through quite a few of them. And obviously font, regular. Uh, one of the things that you'll notice is that, you know, the desktop font is available for me to presently change, but the tablet and the mobile font are grayed out. You need to select those particular views in order to make those changes. So something there just to be aware of. And obviously all the things you'd expect to find in the properties inspector are here. You can add drop shadows, you can highlight the text, you can change the font, the, co the color of the font and so on. Um, let's go back to the desktop view for a moment here. The very next block that can be added are media blocks. So for example, a slide like this, I might want to add an image block and we can just pop that in and it again comes up with um, you know an image that's sort of default you'll be able to change that and you can either keep this text or or not in this case here i just want the image itself so i can unselect caption and subtitle and then of course uh, it's kind of faint here but there's a little icon here that if i press i can select where i'm going to get this image from and of course i can choose an image from my own PC in this case, or Mac if you're running this on a Mac, or you can rely on the asset store. And then you can find an image that, you know, might be very appropriate for the course that you're developing here. So, you know, very quickly, as you can see here, I've built a single slide 
Um, let's just change this to the next button here. And um, obviously we have an additional toolbar over here, which allows us to, uh, you know, make certain changes here. Like for example, you know, simply uh, having an action that will take you to another slide, um, that sort of thing. So all of this can be customized. In fact, I'm not really happy with this image here. So I'm gonna double click on that. And here's a preview of what my image looks like. And I can just, you know, maybe resize this image a little bit so that they're, you know, all their heads are in the shot there. Press save. And that looks pretty good. I've decided I'd like to swap these around. So again, you can just drag and drop that. And that's a pretty good looking first slide. Uh, some people have asked, of course, um, you know, how do I change the background of the slide? What if I wanted an image to fill this background? If you click on the film strip over here and then simply go to Properties Inspector and underneath Visual Properties, you can select either a solid background, a linear background, a radial background. These are gradients here. Or you can choose an image background. And again, that can come from the asset store. So if we wanted to use, let's say, a, a very clear office environment in the background, we can do so. And then, of course, that kind of screws up our uh, title here. But not a problem. You can select this here and select card and turn that into a card so that it contrasts with that background uh, quite nicely there. So it doesn't take very much to build a slide here. And again, I don't really even think about responsive design. It just sort of happens. Now, one of the paradigms that's really new with uh, the all new Adobe Captivate is the ability to have um, unlimited content on a single slide. You know, in the past, once you had a slide like this, you'd have to go back to your plus icon and click it and then add a new slide for maybe learning objectives or agenda or glossary of terms or whatever. But there's nothing to say that you can't keep adding blocks to this single slide here. So let's go ahead and go ahead and do a new text block here. You'll see it just extends down into the bottom here. And uh, we can do something to maybe make that a card so it's easier to read. And we can just keep going. We can have multiple columns after this. We'll use the idea of the cards there or, uh, you know, choose a solid color for the background. And we can keep going and keep going and keep going until we have basically a single scrolling a bunch of uh, content here. Let's look at it on mobile. You see what happens here is it gets nice and thin and the two items that were side by side are now stacked on top of one another. So you could give someone a mobile course that they could just keep scrolling through without having to use any kind of navigation controls. So very useful. Um, and I think it really opens up the possibilities for responsive design here. So quickly, let's just review some of the key things. This will be uh, a relatively short video. Obviously, I could talk for hours about this new software, but we have our text blocks. We've, we've talked a, a little bit about image blocks. You can do a, a single character where we have a character and a little scenario for scenario-based training. There's also, you know, two characters having a conversation perhaps. On desktop, they'll be spread out a little bit more there. So there's a lot that you can really do with this. Um, what else do we have here? Obviously, slide video, similar to what we have today. And you can even have multiple videos on a slide. So you could have an entire grid of videos that would be available, and you could add them here. You can increase the number of videos that you're going to display by selecting this, uh, this number here and using the slider here. So depending on how many videos you want to show, give people uh, an opportunity to use that. Again, there's design options for each one of these uh, blocks. And of course, you can turn on or off any of the components 
for these particular items here. So if I uncheck title and put cards, we put the videos on a neat little white background there. And again, completely works with responsive design. You end up with, you know, cards that are stacked on top of one another rather than side by side. So you can very quickly build this out. Uh, also too, there's interactive components that can be added. There's the button interaction, which is pretty straightforward, but we have text entry boxes through the use of what are called input fields. We have radio groups. So if you wanted to create your own multiple choice questions, you could do that. We have a drop down selector. This is something I've wanted for a long time. And also checkbox, which is useful if you have multiple choice, multiple answer type questions that you wish to design as well. Now, if that weren't enough, Adobe's provided us with a whole bunch of new widgets, which are really exciting. You have these uh, sort of like a content uh, flip card effect. Uh, I know I've sort of tried to do this myself using uh, custom advanced uh, actions in the past, but hey, if it's already built in and looks good, that's the important thing. Uh, you'll be able to add these as well. Again, we've got our super infinite uh, version of this here. So there's our little flip card widget that you can customize with your own images and your own text. Also two tabs, content carousel. I'll let you explore this on your own, of course. I like the timeline widget. Uh, as long as it looks good, I think it's gonna be pretty cool. Uh, various click to reveals, hotspots, uh, drag and drop is there right out of the gate. That was something we had to uh, wait for a little bit in the future, but that's available for us now. In addition to when you're building your project, you can also do software simulation. So that's not a feature we have to wait for. However, video, um, video demo is something that, uh, that is currently not there, but will be coming at some point. And like uh, all the power of a regular classic Captivate, we still have a full timeline where you can adjust the length of time. In a separate video, I'm gonna talk a little bit about adding audio to your slides and, uh, and introducing closed captions for it as well. So that's sort of the, the preview of the main toolbar items here. Down at the bottom, we have a quick link to the assets window. And this is, again, all the slide templates that are available for you to use and customize. Um, cutout characters are there like before. A variety of different background images or regular images that can be used. Icons, so if you want to create icons instead of back and next buttons, you've got a variety of those. Uh, and of course, audio and video as well are all available to you here. Some of these are a holdover from, from classic Captivate, but uh, the folks at Adobe have assured me that we're gonna see a lot more here as well. If we move over to the right, the, the properties inspector, we've kind of already covered that, and your ability to customize all the parameters of your slides can be done from over here. Now there's this bar over here on the, um, on the side. This works with, uh, in conjunction with your properties inspector. So here's your visual properties. That's sort of the first area of the properties inspector. Over here are interactions. So if you click on interactions, you can be very precise with, uh, you know, the, when you press this button, this button, this button, this button, then maybe the next button appears. Um, I'll be exploring this extensively because this is essentially the new advanced actions. It's done a little bit differently and you won't have to rely on variables as much as before. Um, so a big improvement there. Down here, and it's not always applicable to what you have selected, but there are animations available. I'd have to choose something uh, that could be animated, I guess, for that to work. And you can do different things like have the, um, maybe the characters fade in, stretch in, scale in, uh, swirl in. All of these effects are going to be available to you. And you can just really make your course uh, a lot more dynamic that way. Uh, directions and of course duration and ease out and different effects uh, can be added to each of these. And of course you'll have the ability 
to test all of these out. Keep in mind that this is truly a web browser here. So what you see is really what you're going to get. So uh, this is uh, unlike past versions of Captivate where, you know, you design something in Captivate, you go to preview it and you get a completely different look and feel to what you were expecting. In this case here, this is what you see is what you get. Um, from here, we have the ability to add audio. Again, I'm going to do that uh, sort of in a separate uh, video. I'm going to have many videos. Uh, 2019, Adobe Captivate 2019, I think I had over 700 videos. So I expect I'll probably have just as many for this version as well. Uh, might take a while, but uh, they're coming. So we can import audio. The other thing you can do, of course, is you can add uh, text-to-speech. So text-to-speech is definitely included here. And like I said, I'll be doing a video about that in the very near future because that one I think is important. The other thing that's quite nice is that there is an accessibility properties inspector. So everything you need to make this course accessible will be on this panel here. So things like the tab order, the reading order, uh, also to uh, accessible text for the slide itself, and of course, accessible text uh, for the objects as well. So this is uh, really good news to have this sort of stuff here. You could ch put in labels of what the image is. Um, you can hide certain objects from the screen reader and so on, so quite good. Down here are the table of contents and play bar controls. You can turn those on. For example, if you decide not to show a play bar, you can hide the play bar just by unselecting it there. And that way you won't see a play bar. Let's do a quick preview of this project so you can see it uh, without that. What's going to happen is that just by clicking that once, it's going to open in this preview window here. So we can see what our project looks like. There it is there, there's no controls here. The only controls would be the buttons that I give you from here. But again, the way this is designed, it's designed to scroll uh, through the entire course there. If you wanted to show um, controls, you certainly can do so. And they're kind of generic, which is I think better than something weird and customizable from someone else's perspective. But these are the controls here and your learner will be able to collapse those down to a single icon as well. Here, what we're seeing, of course, is the preview uh, for different sizes. So we have desktop, tablet, smartphone, and smartphone portrait, and also this full-size view as well. So this will use up the whole width of the browser and we'll be able to see uh, you know, as much of the course as possible with all the content displayed here. So uh, last but not least is uh, project properties. So when you select project properties, you'll see a few things. Now, obviously there is a default desktop size. That's 1366 by 768, fine. Uh, you can uh, choose to import other themes. The theme that's built into this project is kind of generic here and it has the following color palette and we have the ability to edit this theme or change the theme. If you edit the theme, you'll get the theme editor load up like so. So if you work for an organization that has a particular set of colors that they use for their branding, system colors, uh, obviously choice of fonts, and you can select them one by one here and make changes. So if, for example, you don't want to use Georgia as your font, you can actually just change it right up here. Um, and I will just choose Arial for now. And this will update all the Georgia fonts to Arial. So it's a nice quick way to customize your theme. You can change the colors, of course. Uh, you can also choose uh, image presets. Uh, so when you do bring in images, you can actually choose, like let's say, for example, Colorize. And for every time you bring in an image, you want it to have a blue tint to it. And that can sort of be your default um, colorize effect for all your images that you bring in to a course. You just don't need to apply it. 
um, but it, it will be ready for you with the right uh, colorized uh, overlay as well. Slide background can be uh, customized here so you can change the color or you can say, well, all my courses are going to use this particular background and so on. And then, of course, there's all the things like buttons, check boxes, input fields, and drop down selectors. So you'll have the opportunity to customize all of those elements. And once, of course, uh, you've built this out, you can export that theme, share it with your colleagues within the organization, and they can use the same themes that you are so that there's consistency across all your courses. There's a lot still for me to learn. I'm just really starting out with the software. Um, the time I would have spent working on the beta, I've been busy designing and developing just like all of you in Captivate 2019 for my regular clients. So I haven't given this as much effort as I have in the past versions, but I can assure you that now that things are uh, a little bit easier for me and summers open up, I'm gonna be spending time really exploring this software and finding those hidden tips and tricks. And if you wanna make sure you get those videos, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel. And every time I upload a new video about either classic Captivate or the all new Adobe Captivate, you'll get notified as well. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com. And don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.